Hello, my dream. The topic of our discussion today is preeclampsia, and we will talk about its clinical presentation, the investigations, and management. So, what is the definition of preeclampsia? Preeclampsia refers to the new onset of hypertension and proteinuria, or the new onset of the hypertension plus significant and organ dysfunction, with or without proteinuria in previously normotensive patient, typically after twentieth week of gestation or postpartum. It's very important to know about the high risk factors of the preeclampsia as mentioned in the NICE guideline and those include first of all hypertension in the previous pregnancy, chronic kidney disease, the autoimmune disease such as systemic lupus erythematosus or antiphospholipid syndrome, type 1 or type 2 diabetes, chronic hypertension. The moderate risk factors of preeclampsia include first of all first pregnancy, age 40 years or older, pregnancy interval of more than 10 years, body mass index of 35 kg per meter square or more at the first visit, family history of the preeclampsia and multi-fetal pregnancy. Now we will talk about the clinical presentation of the preeclampsia. When a patient presents with increased blood pressure, then we will take history in this way. First of all, we will ask about the demographic profile in which we will ask about the name of the patient, the age of the patient, the educational status, the occupation, the gravity and parity, the LMP and exact gestational age and the presenting complaints. Then we will take the trimester wise history starting from the first trimester till the current gestational age. We will ask the routine questions trimester wise. Then detail related to blood pressure is very important. We will start, we will ask the question when was the uh, high blood pressure complaint started? Because if the patient presents with raised blood pressure before 20th weeks of gestation, then it means that most probably she has got the chronic hypertension. So ask about the duration of the raised blood pressure, the medication she is taking the dosage, the frequency of the medication, the frequency of checking the blood pressure and exclude IOGR. The fetal movement pattern should be asked from the patient and also ask from the patient uh, the questions related to the pattern of the abdominal growth. Then what treatment done so far? Here in this hospital, if the patient is admitted, we will ask that what type of the blood tests have been done, has urine test been done or not, 24-hour urine collection been done or not, history of the any fits and um, history of any injections like magnesium sulfates and what treatment done so far. In the obstetric history, we will ask about the history of the PIH, preeclampsia, increased blood pressure in the previous pregnancy and at what gestation that complaint took place, what treatment she got, the frequency of any control and any ultrasound scan being done or not and the mood of the deliveries in the previous uh, pregnancies. Then we will ask the routine questions related to the gynecological history. In the medical history specifically ask about history of diabetes and autoimmune diseases then the drug history is she taking any other drug the family history of the raised blood pressure the surgical history the personal history and socioeconomic histories are taken as we do in routine before starting examination we give thermometer to the patient and ask her to put it under her armpit Examine the hands for pallor and cyanosis. Check the pulse. Check blood pressure appropriately. Examine the neck of the patient for thyroid. Examine conjunctiva for pallor. Examine sclera for jaundice. Then take thermometer back from the patient and check and record the temperature. Examine the legs of the patient for pedal edema. In hypertensive patient, it's very important to check the reflexes, like we have to check the nature and if the reflexes are brisk, that may indicate the toxicity of the magnesium sulfate. Also check the ankle jerk of the patient and check whether it is brisk or it is normal. Check the ankle clonus. After completing the general physical examination, we go for the systemic examination. Then do routine obstetric examination by checking the fundal height, excluding the IUGR, assessing the liquor volume, estimated fetal weight and fetal heart sound. Check abdominal wall edema 
and right upper quadrant tenderness. After examination of the patient, we go for the baseline investigation, which include first of all the blood group and RH factor. Blood complete picture including hemoglobin, total leukocyte count and total platelets count. Urine routine examination. Random blood sugar which is one hour post finder or in Asian population it's better to do oral glucose tolerance test. HPS antigen plus anti-HCV plus anti-HIV antibody test. Among the specific investigations the first very important is that of the liver function tests and the liver function tests include serum bilirubin, ALT and ALP level. But ALT is specifically done as ALP is not of much importance in pregnancy. Next is that of the renal function test which include blood uh, urea, serum creatinine, serum uric acid and serum electrolytes. The coagulation profile like uh, PT, APTT are done especially if the platelet count is decreased. Then for the accurate diagnosis of the preeclampsia, 24-hour urinary protein test is done or the albumin creatinine or protein creatinine ratio is performed as per recommendation by the new NICE guideline. The fetal tests include dating scan showing CRL, number of the fetuses, any next cell pathology and estimated date of delivery according to the dating scan. Secondly, we go for the anomaly scan with date showing any congenital anomaly. Then the recent scan with the date is performed showing biometry, amniotic fluid index, estimated fetal weight, placental localization and the presentation of the fetus. Next come the management of a patient with a preeclampsia and the management depends upon the overall clinical presentation, the examination and investigation findings. It's very important to know who needs admission according to the NICE guideline. First of all, those patients who sustain systolic blood pressure of 160 millimeter or mercury or higher. Secondly, any maternal biochemical or hematological investigation of concern like rise in creatinine above 90 micromole per liter or rise in ALT above 70 international per, uh, unit per liter or fall in the platelets under 150,000 per microliter. Moreover, if we have signs of impending eclampsia, signs of impending pulmonary edema or severe preeclampsia or suspected fetal compromise, we need to admit such patients. So once the diagnosis is confirmed, counsel the patient regarding the diagnosis that she has got preeclampsia and she needs admission. Involve multidisciplinary team in the management of the patient, including anesthetist, unitologist, and physician if uncontrolled fitting, hematologist for hematological derangement. Explain the fetomaternal risk associated with the preeclampsia and the maternal risks include the risk of CVA, hypertensive encephalopathy, acute renal failure, pulmonary edema, superimposed preeclampsia, placental abruption and the postnatal eclampsia. The fetal risk include the risk of miscarriage, if it is early pregnancy, the preterm delivery, IUGR, intrauterine death, and the congenital malformation. So once we plan that the patient needs admission, then we will tell the aims of admission to the patient that uh, the aim of admission is first of all to control the blood pressure, to optimize the symptom, to monitor the mother and the fetus, and to take pregnancy as close to the term as possible. So the fetal monitoring include first of all the obstetric uh, abdominal examination for the fetal lie, fetal presentation, the liquor volume. Secondly, we have to give the fetal kick count chart to the patient on daily basis. We have to check the fetal heart sound 12 hourly, weekly obstetrical ultrasound plus biophysical profile and two to three weekly growth scan plus umbilical artery Doppler. Now this is a chart from the NICE guideline about fetal monitoring. In case of the hypertension when the blood pressure is between 140 by 90 to 159 by 109, we have to offer fetal auscultation at every antenatal appointment and carry out the ultrasound 
on two weekly basis and carry out CTG at diagnosis and then only if clinically indicated. And the same points apply to the severe hypertension when the blood pressure is between 160 by 110 or more. Now we will talk about maternal monitoring. Aim for the blood pressure of 135 by 85 or less in case of the hypertension and severe hypertension both. In case of the hypertension, we have to measure the blood pressure at least every 48 hours and more frequently if the woman is admitted to the hospital. And in case of the severe hypertension, check the blood pressure every 15 to 30 minutes until the blood pressure is less than 160 by 110 and then at least four times daily while the woman is inpatient depending upon the clinical circumstances. In case of the hypertension, do dipstick proteinuria and repeat if clinically indicated, for example, if new symptoms and signs develop or if there is uncertainty or diagnosis. In case of the severe hypertension, do dipstick proteinuria and only repeat if clinically indicated, for example, if new symptoms and signs develop or if there is uncertainty or diagnosis. In case of the hypertension, my year full blood count, liver function test and renal function test twice a week. In case of the severe hypertension, my year full blood count, liver function test and renal function test three times a week. Give steroid cover in the form of injection dexamethasone between 24 to 35 weeks for the fetal lung maturity. Monitor the patient for fits. Ideally, keep the patient admitted till delivery because of unpredictable nature of the fits that can occur at any time. Now, when can the patient be discharged? Once the patient is completely stable, fit-free and the blood pressure is under control, then after explaining the risk and taking well-informed written consent, only then she can be discharged back to home with the full arrangement in case the fits happen. And if we discharge her to home, advise weekly antenatal visit. At each visit, inquire about fetal movement, sign and symptom of imminent eclampsia, pattern of the abdominal growth, and the check blood pressure, pedal edema, right upper quadrant tenderness, clonus, and check preeclampsia toxemia profile weekly, and also the two weekly ultrasound scan and the Doppler scan. Next question is about the timings of the delivery. If patient presents before 34 weeks of gestation with the preeclampsia, continue surveillance unless there are indications for the planned early birth. From 34 to 36 weeks of gestation, also continue surveillance unless there are indications for planned early birth. And when considering the options of the planned early birth, take into account the woman's and the baby's condition, the risk factors and the availability of neonatal unit beds. If patient presents 37 weeks onward, initiate birth within 24 to 48 hours. Regarding the mood of the delivery, it's written in the NICE guideline that if there is no contraindication to the vaginal birth, we can go for the vaginal birth. And if the patient is not in labor, then we, go, we can go for the induction of the labor. Provide appropriate labor care according to WHO labor care guide. After the birth of the baby, provide appropriate postnatal care. And in the woman with the preeclampsia who didn't take the antihypertensive treatment, check the blood pressure at least four times a day while the woman is inpatient, at least between three and 50 once. And on alternative days until normal if the blood pressure was abnormal on day three to five. Along with checking blood pressure, it's very important to do the postnatal maternal monitoring. If the patient is on methyl dopa, change to calcium channel blockers within two days. Urine albumin 12 hourly and inquire about the symptoms of imminent eclampsia. Discuss the different choices of the contraception with the patient. All methods are safe other than combined oral contraceptive pills because COCP suppress lactation, increase BP and increase risk of VTE. Now, when can the patient be discharged? If the patient is stable and BP is less than 150 by 100, then she can be discharged. After discharge, check blood pressure daily or on alternative days. After discharge, we have to arrange the postnatal visits. Arrange first postnatal visit at two weeks. 
when we have to check the blood pressure plus urine albumin plus PET profile. Arrange second visit at sixth week when we have to check the blood pressure plus urine albumin plus PET profile. Then we have to arrange the last visit at third uh, month when we have to do urine albumin if still positive do RFTs plus renal scan plus 24 hour or, or proteins and refer to the nephrologist. So thank you so much that was all about the preeclampsia, the clinical presentation, investigations and management. Subscribe on Obs and Gynae. Allah Hafiz.